before any of my talk, I only have two rules, okay? The first one is to be real with you. Open up, tell you what it is. If it's A, we call it A. If it's B, we call it B. And then the second one is to have fun. So if you are on those two rules with me, please give me a yeah. 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 All right, I love that. I love that, ladies and gentlemen. Well, today, I begin a new life. Today, I shared my old skin, which has too long suffered the bruises of failure and the wounds of mediocrity. Today, I walk, I will walk tall among men, they will know me not. For today, I am a new man with a new life. With these verses repeated aloud from the first of the 10 scrolls of the book, The Greatest Six Men in the World, written by Og Mandino, I will end my self-priming morning routine 11 years ago and head out to tackle my sales job, enthusiastic, excited, passionate, like never before. Well, my primary task at this sales job was to sell vacuum cleaners, which I must confess, I knew nothing about. And I mean literally nothing. That is because until the age of 19, I had never seen a vacuum cleaner in my life. That is because I'm from Togo. T-O-G-O, -O, small West African country, north to the south, 600 kilometers east to the west, 180 kilometers. I was sitting right next to the gentleman here. I was like, from Togo, he's like, Togo, whoa. <laughs> so the population of Togo is 7.8 million people, and we grew quite fast, actually. In the past 13 years, we were just, I mean, 13 years ago, we were just 4.5 million people. So that shows how much you know, babies, people, Togo people make, right? <laughs> so you have over 80% of Togolese population that live on less than $2 a day. So we basically keep our, keep our homes and houses clean with brooms like this from the dirt and dust rolls. These brooms, by the way, are made from palm tree. That's what we use to clean our home. So I had never seen or touched a vacuum cleaner until I was about the age of 18 when I had taken the first decision to leave my country and relocate to a better destination, in this case, which was South Africa, to recreate success, what I mean was success meant to me back then, and change the course of my destiny by braving death and immigration borders. A lot of immigration borders. <laughs> so every day, my goal basically would be to sell two more vacuum cleaners than the previous day and speak to 10 more people so that I could, I, I could fulfill that daily goal of making those machines fly off the shelf. The reason why I was so ambitious, I was so hungry to fulfill that daily goal was because before I actually got that sales job, life has molded me with a series of tribulations. I was homeless. I had spent days with no food. I had to live off dustbins sometimes. As a matter of fact, when I got that sales job, I was living in a shack. The rent was about 19 euros, and I couldn't even afford it. Language itself was a barrier. Now, many people think Africa is a country, and uh, they speak one language. Okay. <laughs> well, let me surprise you. There are over 2,530 languages in Africa as we speak. So Africa being a country, you have different tribes in it, and everybody, for whatever reason, expected me to sell to them in their language, which I didn't know. Well, I tried sometimes but really didn't work. So all those limitations together were indeed holding me back, but I just wasn't prepared to let any of those limitations prevent me from achieving that daily goal. And I would head out every single day doing, hi, ma'am, how are you? If you can give me a minute of your time, I want to tell you why. If you buy this vacuum cleaner, your husband will love you again. Hi, sir, how are you? If you can hold on right there, I want to show you how this vacuum cleaner will vacuum all your curtains, all your homes, and make even all your mistresses love you more. <laughs> so I was hungry, driven, and pushing these vacuum cleaners out. And pretty soon, with consistency and a burning desire to grow, I started gaining my momentum. Like the writer said that, the secret to success is to be ready, is to be prepared when that opportunity comes. So I had to make sure that I was prepared. So I will sell vacuum cleaners during the day, 
And at night, I'll go and study, take business management classes, leadership classes, psychology, because I was hungry. And before I knew it, by the end of the third year, the opportunity came. I was approached by this competing company to drive my momentum further. But this time, not as, not as a vacuum cleaner salesperson, but this time as a senior manager, where I would have the opportunity to lead a sales force of over 300 people and accounting of millions of dollars of sales yearly. Finally, I thought, the days of struggle, the nights of long studies, the days of facing racism in a country like South Africa, being called monkey over and over again, finally those days will pay off. So I jumped at this opportunity, hungry, determined more than ever to drive that momentum further, not knowing that exactly three years from then, I was about to lose that very momentum. Now, I know for a fact that everybody here loves to gain momentum. If you don't love to gain momentum, raise your hand. Oh yeah, nobody raise their hands. But the question is, is there an upside to losing momentum? Is there an upside to that? But before answering that question, I would like to remind you the most prevalent definition of momentum there is, and that comes from science. Science defines momentum as the measurable quantity of movement in a body or object. But since life is an infinite linear from which we are yet to grasp the beginning from its end, I will stick to the one of the many definitions by Miriam Webster, which defines momentum as being this force that builds up as an object moves and moves and gain more speed, goes faster and stronger. But I've got a definition too of momentum. Who wants to hear it? Yeah. Oh yeah, I love you guys. Well, <laughs> my definition of momentum within the context of human beings is that is when we build up the force that comes from decisive and concrete actions we take, inspired to us by a clear vision, well-defined goals, and a tremendous amount of motivation. The writer Michael Crotter says that one way to keep momentum is to consistently have greater goals. By having and achieving one goal at a time, one step at a time, we gain that momentum and we build the confidence to break through life challenges and obtain those major breakthroughs we so desire. But be wary, because as you grow, as you gain that confidence, just at the top, that's when everything can literally crumble. When I was offered that opportunity working in the corporate world, I was doing well. I was one, I, as a matter of fact, my colleagues were 50. I was in just in my early 20s. My colleagues were 50, 53 years old, and month to month, I was the best senior manager, making money, leading and inspiring my people. Well, I became very confident. The momentum wasn't going, so I decided to quit my corporate job and start an import-export company, which failed a year later and took everything I had with it, literally everything. My girlfriend was gone. The cars I had bought had, has, was gone. The house I had bought was gone. Everything was gone. I was frustrated. I was depressed. I didn't know what to do. I started to ask myself the question that most people ask when they are being crushed by life. Why me? To the point, one day, I was even contemplating suicide. But before I could take that action, before I could take that deed, I came to realization. I was like, hang on. A seed gives birth to a tree in the dark of earth. When we become idle, empty of momentum, in the darkness of confusion, there is always an opportunity to create something new, or should I say, someone new. But only if, only if we could hold on to the idea, we could hold on to our core essence, hold on to our core purpose, and just fathom the idea that if there was one chance in a million for us to bounce back, bigger, stronger, better, if there was just that one chance, that chance would be ours. And that is the first upside of losing momentum. 
The second upside of losing momentum is to be able to realize at that moment the things, the little things that we miss the most. In my case, I was after success, I made the money. I was very close to my family financially. I would call my mom and be like, Mom, listen, I'm sending you some money. She's like, yeah, my nephews, I have 16 nephews, by the way. Okay? Yeah. My nephews, my nieces, I'll ensure that they had all their gifts on their birthday present. I was very close to them financially. But emotionally, I wasn't there. When I would meet my friends, we'll talk about you know, what we have achieved this last weekend, what's the target, sales target, we'll talk about all of those. But the truth is, I was not present emotionally. But when I had lost the momentum, that was the time when I realized that I had broken relationships that I had to work on. So losing momentum, during those times, we are able to realize the things that we miss the most. And when we eventually find that balance in our lives, we start to understand that we should never let crisis go to waste. Like the American diplomat Ralph Emanuel says that we should never, ever, let crisis, serious crisis, go to waste. When COVID-19 hit, a lot of people lost momentum. Companies were firing people left and right, over 55% people of, of employees were let go. People were tested, even tight relationships, lovey doveys We saw, hey, I love you, babe, you know. Once they got into confinement, they were tested too, a lot of people lost their momentum during COVID-19. But notice, COVID-19 brought with it the seed that gave us new perspectives, new ways of doing things, new ways of handling ourselves, new ways of looking at the world. Between 2021 and, between 2020, sorry, and 2021, I spoke at over 60 conferences from the comfort of my couch, which wouldn't have happened before. Right? I read this statistic by McKinsey that says that over 53% of products around the world are now being digitized. So are the services. Another statistic that I read that really had my interest was that, that, that over 43% of the remote collaboration and work that is happening right now in Europe is reboosting the economy. How lovely is that? Right? So, that being the third upside of losing momentum, the fourth one that really mattered to me, the fourth one that we all are to take home today is asking those questions. In that very moment, when we think we've lost momentum, when we think that all our effort are no longer translating into growth, but rather stagnation and decline, it's that moment that we take and ask ourselves the questions that really matter. And what are those questions? Am I doing what I love? Am I fulfilling my life purpose? Am I living a life that is inspiring others to be more, dream more, live more? What it is that I can learn from my current situation or the previous one, that can make me wiser. It is making a frank attempt to answering those questions that I discovered my speaking, my speaking and coaching career. It is making an attempt to answer those questions that I was able to leave the two-bedroom house in Togo, West Africa, to writing four books, to teaching others how to stand tall and speak with confidence. It is making an attempt to answer those frank questions that I understood that I've got a passion for people that I am able to inspire and motivate others. Had I not lost my momentum, I would not be here right now gaining a new momentum, having a new vision of building something that, you know, that can enable companies to make people happy. Had I not lost my momentum, ladies and gentlemen, I would not be here right now making a frank attempt to answer the question as to whether there is an upside to losing momentum. So if you have ever lost momentum in your life, or perhaps you are yet to lose one, which I don't wish for you, touch wood, what I want you to do is this, okay? And I want us to do it together, all right? Today, I begin a new life. Today, I shed my old skin. Let's go, let's go, guys, come on. You promised me that you're going to be right, yeah? Okay, let's go. 
Today, I begin a new life. Today, I shared my old skin, which has too long suffered from the loss of momentum. Today, I discern all the upsides of momentum. Today, I will walk tall among men, and they will recognize me. For today, you are a new woman with a new life. <laughs> today, I am a new man with a new life. Today, I am a new man with a new momentum. My name is Steven Dosu, all the way from Togo, T-O-G. You're very much going to be great, and I will see you on top. Thank you very much for having me.